Hi, I'm Wendy from Shiny Happy World, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to put together this skunk applique pattern. So this is one block in the Woodland Critters applique pattern, so that's a larger quilt pattern that includes a lot of different animals. But the skunk is also available as a standalone, so you can buy just the skunk pattern if you really just want just a whole quilt full of skunks. That would be awesome. Um, both of those are available at shinyhappyworld.com. Here's how to make it. Okay. I've got all the pieces ready for the skunk here. So this is the version of the pattern that um, is showing you how to do it without the light box. Sorry, this is the video showing you how to assemble these pieces without using a light box. And for those, you need to transfer all of the lines that you see on the paper side of your pattern over to the fabric side. And um, that will help you to position the pieces, which you're gonna see in just one second. So we're gonna start with the shoulder piece. So this is gonna be snapshot style. So it's like I've snapped a photo and the skunk has a body, the, the rest of her body. It's just not visible because of the way I framed the photo. That's how I like to think of it. And so that means I'm going to take the raw edge at the bottom of the block and I'm gonna line it up with the raw edge at the bottom of the block. So those will get embedded in the seam when I sew those blocks together. And I'm gonna to need to shift this. I just centered it, but I need to actually shift it over to the side a bit because we need to have room for her tail. And so I'm actually gonna put the tail piece in next so that I can get that centered properly before I put all the rest of the pieces on there. So we're gonna start with this tail piece, and I've got this line that I transferred. Now I just need to tuck that behind the body until that chalk line is covered up, and then I know I have a good overlap. And so that's, I think I'm gonna shift it over just a little bit more. So that I think is gonna be pretty good. All right, now I'm gonna just finish putting the tail together. She needs that dramatic white stripe down her tail. And I'm just gonna line this up so that this point lines up on the point of the tail and we cover those markings that I have on the tail piece. There we go. All right, now let's put her head in place. There we go. You know, I'm not crazy about how my grid lines are lining up there exactly. So I'm gonna give her head just a little tilt just to help create some definition between those fabrics. Since I used the same fabric, uh, I just didn't like how they were lining up there. Sometimes that happens. Now I'm gonna put her little belly patch on. Give her her white underbelly. Down just a little bit more. Okay, let's get her ears in place. So these also, like the tail, have got uh, a line that I transferred that is gonna show me where I need to cover that up. That should, helps me with the depth. There we go. And same thing on this side. And let's get her little forehead stripe in there. And you're just gonna line that up with the top edge of her head and then cover up the lines, the transfer lines. Put her nose in there. This is just gonna overlap the end of that stripe. And you wanna make sure that the point at the bottom of the nose lines up with the downstroke. Uh, you want it to be pointing exactly at that line in the middle of the mouth. And then the last thing is her eyes. And I actually transferred the eyelashes over on this one. So I'm hoping that they show up well enough on this gray. I chose a gray instead of a black fabric just a very dark gray so that the 
facial features, which show up a little bit more. All right, so I'm gonna take this over to my ironing board. I'm gonna fuse it all in place. Just follow the directions on whatever brand of fusible adhesive you use. Mine is Heat and Bond Light. Then I'll do all of the outline stitching and bring it back here and show you the finished block and also show you another color option that I did for the skunk. Here's the finished skunk. All of the outline stitching is done and I've added some catch lights to her eyes, just a little dot of white fabric paint and there's a video a link in the, in the pattern to a video showing you how to do that. Um, but I also wanted to show you a couple of other different color options that I did. So this one is the sample that you'll see on the cover of the Woodland Critters applique pattern. So all of the background blocks in that sample use different um, fabrics from the avocado blenders collection that I have in my Spoonflower shop. And all of the animals use realistic animal colors from the Animal Kingdom blenders collection. So that is the one that you see on the cover of the Woodland Critters pat quilt pattern, but I have another version. So like the first one, the skunk herself is in realistic colors, but the background block is a soft pastel. This is uh, one of the solids, one of the quilt blocks. Um, it's a solid color just with the quilting lines already printed on it from the Farmer's Market collection. And I did one more version, total fantasy version. So this is for a quilt that I'm working on where all of the background blocks are from the Animal Kingdom collection. So instead of the animals being realistic colors and the background being a bright color, the background is neutral animal colors and the animals are all from the Farmer's Market Blenders collection and each animal is monochromatic, so different shades of the same color. I'm Wendy from Shiny Happy World and this is the Skunk Pattern.